Talk. I'm Michelle Quay. I'm a confidence and leadership coach. And this is my live coffee talk show where I bring you love, courage, and inspiration. Today, joining me as we all have gone through 10 months of living in situations. I tend to call this situation rather than circumstances nowadays because we have a lot of different situations that arises during this last 10 months. Now we are here. How do we rise above those circumstances or rise about our, our situation? So today joining me in today's show is Heather Criswell. Heather is the founder of Wise Inside and the author of two books, How to Raise a Happy Child and Wise Talk from the, outs from the Other Side. She is the winner of the Mom's Choice Award, Honorary Excellence, and the winner of Create a Child Award, Book of the Year in 2013. At age 21, she opened uh, her one-of-the-kind school where children were empowered, celebrated, encouraged to share their unique gifts with the world and simply just loved. Heather has worked uh, with over 30,000 children in her 25 years career. And since then, she opened a holistic wellness center, launching an online empowerment company, and now helps corporation, business, and individuals who have had hard conversation with the power and grace. Her life purpose include helping people rise from their circumstances, love themselves and each others through it and shine even brighter with conversation that matters. So without further ado, please join me with a warm welcome, Heather Criswell. Hi, Hi. Heather. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I would, as you were reading it, I'm just thinking, Oh my gosh, this is so important in this time right here, right now. You know, these conversations were not planned. So I, the way that I, I invite speaker is I just go out there and just throw it out there. And, you know, whoever, you know, respond to my post, respond to my invite, I feel the universe is really connecting at its best time. And as we look around, you know, there's a lot of situation, there's a lot of circumstances, a lot of us identify as problems or challenges. So I'm, I'm really, I was really fascinated by um, your bio when I was reading it, I was like, whoa, this woman is what just what I need on the show. <laughs> Yeah, you know, especially right here, right now, you know, we're dealing with Inauguration Day today, which is in America is a big deal, um, and especially under the circumstances that we're in right now and the situations we're in. So um, it's really important for us to continue these conversations, regardless of how we both feel, because I think that at the end of the day, we can appreciate each other more when we share each other wholly. Um, and and with confidence and grace at the same time. There is grace that is involved in every conversation. And when we can tap into that wisdom and love and grace, then that's when we can connect, like you said, have love and courage to connect to each other and be okay with that. You may believe one way, I may believe in another and we can still coexist together. Yeah, I think, you know, you use a really, and. Um, um really empowering word, grace. And I think, you know, grace is something that we can all show each other right now, just having, and, and I like to break it down in, in terms of like the, uh, the acronym of grace, right? So G, I usually uh, think about it as uh, gratitude. Okay. Gratitude, and there's that acknowledgement, there's that compassion, and there's that, you know, you bring in the energy into a conversation. So, you know, I, I, I really, really um, just in wow in your experience and, and what you have gone through. So I wanted to go back a little bit to bring, um, to keep, keep our audience up to date in terms of what got you into doing the work that you're doing right now? Well, you know, again, it started as working with children and there's nobody that's more honest on this planet than a two-year-old or three-year-old child. <laughs> they will tell you honestly, who they are, what they are. Um, there's no real shame involved yet. So they taught me so much about how to communicate um, and how to do it in a way that was true and honest to themselves. And yet, pretty matter of fact and blunt, right? You know, something you can't really argue with when a two year old walks in and says, I'm the most beautiful 
person on the planet, you know, are you going to argue with them? Probably not, you know? So um, they taught me so much uh, about how to actually share who I am with the world and to help others share who they are with the world, but to say it in a way that feels good to you first and foremost, but also can be heard in a, in a way for other people. So 25 years of working with 30,000 kids, it was a, a constant state of learn, 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 learn. And then um, I kind of transitioned into a holistic wellness center um, after being with all the kids for so long, I wanted to just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I opened a wellness center and that's where I kind of learned that, to tap into that body wisdom, that there's an innate wisdom that lies within us of, of what works for us, what doesn't, um, who we are. And as a massage therapist and Reiki practitioner and, and just energy healer, um, that kind of stuff all came together. And then I launched my, uh, my kind of empowerment uh, company where I had tools to help people to actually communicate with their children, with themselves, with each other. And now as time has evolved, I've looked at like corporations, I've worked with different corporations to help them have these hard conversations because I do believe innately that we all are here um, on purpose and that we all matter. And I think that sometimes life gets in the way and other people's opinions get in the way of who we really are. Mm -hmm. So if we can tap into who we really are and share that with grace, with the tools and strategies and skill set, that a simple word can change a whole experience or an attitude, you know, can change an experience where, you know, I ran into somebody that with the mass situation that we're in right now, there are people that are adamantly against mass. There are people that are adamantly for mass. And what an interesting conversation is I was walking through Costco and this lady is screaming at this other woman, you better put your effing mask on now, blah, 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 just screaming at her. Mm -hmm. And I had a moment where I was like, you know, this could be handled so much easier and better and full of grace and love and compassion of, look, I'm not comfortable with you not having a mask. So can you please stay six feet away from me? Can you please whatever, right? Or I'm not comfortable being here. I'm going to leave vice versa, right? Like there's a conversation that could have taken place that could have been uh, diffused that situation so that there's not so much anger, violence, frustration, annoyance, but more who am I? What am I wanting? How can we cooperate together? And if we can't, how can we have compassion for each other? And if we can't, how can we move on with our lives outside of each other yeah. and still exist as human beings on this planet with different opinions? And I think that that is something that's really, really important for us to tap into right here, right now. Mm -hmm. I, I love everything, the, the story that you just shared, because the other day I walked into a post office and there was a guy who was you know, he's buying and looking for the boxes that they have on the shelf. So he was a little too close to me, which made me feeling a little bit nervous. And, you know, despite the fact that he had the mask on, he was, you know, doing the proper thing, but he was a little too close to me. And I was hesitating whether or not to say something about like how the fact that he was getting too close to me. So finally, I, I actually did say something. I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. Can you stand back a little bit more? So he did. It was in a very, you know, polite, civil uh, manner in which I communicated what I desire. And he, he, was really respectful and he moved back uh, a couple of inches. So I'm, I'm really interested because um, what you have brought up in your experience of working with 30,000 children versus now you're working more, dealing with more of the adult population. What, what have you noticed is the main difference between how the child communicate versus the adult communicate? You know, given the same scenario, how would a child right. communicate? That's a great question. You know, nobody's ever asked me that question. I think it's a brilliant question. That's why I love doing podcasts because people ask different things. Uh, you know, the beauty of children is that they don't have a personal vested interest in it, right? They're not personally, they're not taking it personally. And now all children are different. Let me, let me back up just a little bit. All children are different. Stages and ages are different. I'm talking about your young 
children that haven't really been exposed to social norms, all of those kind of things, but like a two, three, four year old, right? Where they just kind of blurt out what they want. And, you know, they just expect that there's a few things. Number one, they expect that they're going to get what they want. Okay. And people will say, well, you can't always get what you want, but is that true? You can always get what you want. It may not be how it looks like you thought it would look, but you can get what you want. In other words, if you're standing next to the guy and you want to be away from him and you say to him, Hey, can you please, you know, take a couple of steps back? I'm feeling uncomfortable. And he says, no, then you can absolutely get what you want. You can step back. You could leave, you could do other things. So there's always, it just might not be how it, we think it looks, right? Where kids always get what they want. They always have in their mind that I'm gonna get what I want out of this. It's not even a question, right? And, and that's innately too. Like, you know, when they cry, they get fed. When they cry, they get changed. Like it, it's programmed that you say what you want and you get it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and adults are a little bit, uh, more, uh, we've more settled in our ways, right? Children are a little bit more malleable. They're a little bit more flexible. If you give them some good reasons, you know, they'll say, okay, or no, you know, one of the two, but, but adults are a little bit more, you know, dig your heels in, I'm going to get this in a certain way. So I think that um, working with the kids over time has taught me to be a little bit more flexible, to see how you can see it in a different way, to know that maybe the expectation I have of this situation might not turn out exactly how I think I want it, but it'll turn out what, what's best for all of us if I just follow follow my heart. And I say that to my son all the time. Is that what your heart's saying? Because when we connect back into our heart, we tend not to say the things that we're going to say, right? So in that situation, you could say with you, you know, one of the big questions I ask myself in any situation is what am I wanting? And I kind of close my eyes for me and tap into my heart. What am I wanting? I'm wanting him to step away. So what do I need to say in this moment to actually speak from my heart, not my head? And that's when you could say, hey, I'm not feeling comfortable, you know, or you can simply too just take a step back for yourself. You know, there's, there's, kids will also do what they want to do and they'll take care of their needs first. So if you don't take care of their needs, they'll take care of their needs for themselves. And I think that that's one of the beautiful lessons in children is that stop making other people responsible for your own feelings and your own, your own upsetness, your own frustration, take matters in your own hand and do what you need to do to help yourself feel better. And kids will do that. You know, they do that instantly. What happens over time is they start to learn our behaviors. And so you've got a five, six, seven year old coming to you and saying like, you know, they'd say, Miss Heather, he, he put, he, he's being mean to me. I don't, I don't like it. And I'd say, this doesn't have anything to do with me. You need to talk to him because we need to cultivate our relationships of talking to each other again. And, and unfortunately, masks have, have kind of stopped that communication. If you've noticed, a lot of people just put their heads down. We're not making eye contact anymore. Um, all of the things that are innately human to us are kind of being, you know, quieted. So for me in particular, I make a very concerted effort to look at people in the eye and say, good morning. You know, regardless of what's happening here, I want them to see my light here at least, right? Mm -hmm. And children, they'll always let you see their light. They never, they never don't let you see their light. You know, they shine, shine bright. And I think that we have a lot of, um, we often tend to think that we need to teach our children, but our children are actually teaching us along the way. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you what you just said uh, because a lot of you know adult I think we're forgetting that we were once a child, and so so we go through our life journey and there's so many things that comes up the situation circumstances that comes up so we forget that there's still an inner child inside of us and we forget to call upon it anytime that we go through um, facing situation where we need to be really honest with ourselves. Like how, how, how am I feeling right now? What do I need to say to get what I want? Right. Um, and, and not in a, like a brat way, you know, not like a stomping your feet. I want to get what I want, but 
how can I take personal responsibility to get my needs met is a big question because there is, yeah. I, I can't, I can't make you feel safe. You can only make yourself feel safe. And that's one of the things with uh, where we're at right now is there's a lot of people saying, well, you need to do this in order to make me feel safe, where it's taking the power out of you and giving it to someone else and on a silver platter. So we need to be responsible in ourselves and say, I need to feel safe. What makes me feel safe? What do I need to do? And for some, that may be, you know, wearing masks, some that may be not, some maybe six foot, maybe not, but put yourself in a circumstance that supports you in what you're needing so that I don't give my power to anybody. Nobody gets my power. And when they do, boy, oh boy, do I get mad. When I give my power away, I'm like, that's it. You know, that's when frustration, just because I know better, right? We know better than to just hand it over and say, well, you're responsible for me, you know, whatever, you know, it's just like me asking you to be responsible by let's not eat at McDonald's. Let's not, you know, go through the drive throughs Let's not smoke. Let's not drink. Let's not do drugs. Like I can't do that for you. I can only do that for myself and be, you know, who I am in that space. So I think it's really important that tapping into what you're wanting. And that's the biggest question I ask myself is what am I wanting right now? And then the next step is, you know, what's the energy I'm bringing to it? If I am in the situation and I'm like, you need to step back from me is very different than I'm feeling really uncomfortable right now. Can, can we just separate a little bit? Can we take a couple of steps back from each other? Very different. And those are the keys that, you know, those are the strategies that I use, the different words, the different tones that help us communicate in a way and still get our needs met without mm -hmm. being frustrated, angry. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a, um, I'm going to challenge you an idea here. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's a, that's a, you know, I, I, I'm asking for what I want. I'm trying really hard to get what I want, but when I still, you know, doing all the doing and I fail in getting what I want, there's that level of disappointment, right? So, so what do you suggest someone who is stuck in their situation? They have tried everything else, but they still find themselves stuck in the circumstances or relating to the circumstances. What do you suggest that something that they can do? Well, what's interesting with children is they naturally remove themselves from a situation. If you watch children, they will literally pull themselves out. And sometimes that looks like stomping off. Sometimes that looks like hiding in the corner and putting their head down and, you know, curling up. Sometimes it looks like just sitting there with their hands pouting quietly, whatever, right? Throwing a fit, but they tend to kind of remove themselves from a situation and I was actually, my child, my son goes to horse camp and they have horse therapy there. And, and one of the horse therapists said to me that horses, when they get all flustered with each other, now I don't know all the technical details because I'm not a horse whisperer, but when horses get all upset, they pull themselves out of the pack and they back up and they kind of reassess and reevaluate and then they come back in. And I think that that's really important lesson from horses, from children to pull ourselves out of a situation. You know, I have a situation right now with my, a family member that I've literally been just back and forth, back and forth. And he, he doesn't get it and I don't get it. And, you know, here I am communications person and I'm struggling with communications, right? Same thing with uh, children. And, and I wrote a book on raising a happy child and my child's angry at me and I'm like, what, what, oh, you know, um, but so, you know, I'm in this situation with my own family member. And what I've had to do is pull myself out of the situation and say to him, look at, I need to take a few months to, to regroup here. I need to have a break from us and to reevaluate where I'm at, what I'm doing so that I can come to you with a clear head because right now it's just mumbled and jumbled and I'm frustrated and I'm angry and I can't get past that anger. And so it's been longer than a couple of months actually. And I'm still not there yet because there was a moment where, you know, we came where we had an opportunity to come together. And I just said, I'm not ready yet. And it's nothing about my, it's nothing about him. It's about me. I need to regroup 
get myself together. Because again, if I give him the power of you're making me mad, you're frustrating me, you're, you're not doing it right or whatever, that's giving my power away. But for me to say, hey, I got to take some deep breaths. I've got to decompress from this situation. And that means that I'm going to be out of this relationship for a few, you know, for however long it takes me in order to get back to center for myself. Because if I'm not centered for myself, I can't be centered with you. And so it'll just escalate always, always. Same thing with kids. You know, we have to decompress for a hot minute when you're in a frustrating battle with your child or, or a friend, you know, sometimes we just need to take a step back and say, I need a minute. And we don't often do that. We don't often say, look, I need a minute here. <laughs> you know, we just keep pressing through, pressing through, hoping that, you know, somebody's going to cave. But if you've got two stubborn people, it's not going to happen, you know, and that's the situation with me and my family members. We're very two stubborn people. We have very clear opinions on what we're wanting in this moment. And so taking that step back has given me an opportunity to kind of decompress from it. And I'm still in the process. Mm -hmm. So it takes time. Nothing happens that quick. And especially if you're stuck in a stubborn moment, like I am, where I'm like digging my heels in. No, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not, you know, um, and it, it's, it's just taking that time for ourselves again, but tapping into the energy. And when I'm ready for that energy, when I'm ready, when I don't feel frustration, anger about the situation and him, then do I take inspired action? So it's, what am I wanting? What's the energy I'm bringing to it? And what's my inspired action? And my inspired action at the time was to take a step back and reevaluate. Now, the next step would be go back over. What am I wanting? I'm wanting to have a clear conversation with him. What's the energy I'm bringing? I'm actually feeling better. I don't have a lot of anger towards him, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then what's the inspired action? Let's actually have a conversation. But again, I'm in the process right now. It's been, I don't know, five months. And I thought it would be one. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm the guilty person of, you know, I used to be really get really angry and argumental in the conversation and it was just really heated conversation and I've learned slowly to actually you know what I can't talk to you right now because I'm really emotional let me just calm myself down before we move any further and that seems that strategy seems to work really well now that's, that either, that's exactly yeah. it it's conversations with grace you know, and we're in a very instant life, right? We're like, okay, we need to find this out now, 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 call me now, text now, voicemail now, everything now, 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 now. And we have to learn to say, I, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. I got to slow my roll here because it's just too much. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I absolutely, I think that that's brilliant. And I think if more people took a step back and actually had a moment to process things, I think that we could calm down and diffuse a lot of the frustration and anger that's happening. Mm, so beautiful. I, I wanted to reset the room a little bit. Um, so I am having a conversation with Heather Criswell. She is the founder of Wise Inside, and she's also the author of two books, How to Raise Happy Child and Wise Talk from the Other Side. She's the winner of the Mom's Choice Award and the winner of Creative Child Award. So Heather, before I wrap this up today, before we wrap this up today, if there's any one word, one lesson that you would like to share with the, with the world, with, with all the audience that who's watching us today, what would that be? You know, it's interesting you say that in this time, because for me today, the lesson would be to be in touch with what you're wanting at all times, because that's when, that's when we get frustrated, when things aren't going our way, right? And to be open to the idea that it may not come in the form that you thought it would, but it comes, right? And so we were at Living Spaces, which is a, a furniture store, and we walk in and we're looking for a bed set. And this one guy, I said, can, can you help us? And he's like, no, I can't help you. And I was just like, ah, here we go again. Like, ah, 
you know, like instantly I get upset, like customer service is going down the tubes, but like I'm having this whole story in my head. Right. You know, and the guy's like, no, I'll get somebody to help you. I'll get a specialist. And I was like, how is there a specialist for beds? Okay, whatever. So I'm frustrated already. Right. Because just I'm feeling very antsy with the world right now and anxiety. So like I I'm tapped into like, I'm feeling really frustrated. And so anybody just kind of pisses me off right now. And so this guy walks up and he's the specialist and he says to me, his name is Pablo. And he says to me, um, hi there. I have all the answers you need. Any question you have, I have the answers you need. And I looked at him, I go, Pablo, I said, why is the world going to hell? And he looked at me and he goes, well, that's an interesting question. Let's talk about that. And then it got into this whole spiritual conversation about the universe and God and angels and, you know, all the things, right? And how things don't look how you thought they would look and, um, you know, expectations and all these things. And, you know, an hour and a half later, my husband's sitting there on his phone, just rolling his eyes, because this is how my life goes. It's just random conversations that happen. But I had this moment of, it wasn't what I thought it was. It didn't come how it looked, because I had a moment before we even walked in there, and I remembered it, where I was like, just give me a reason why there's so much hate and frustration and anger. Like, what do I do with this? Like, how do I help? these kids that are struggling in this moment, you know, our neighbors just had two boys, teenage boys commit suicide because they couldn't go to school because they were all, all stars in football at school, getting scholarships. It all went down the tubes last year and they died for this. So, you know, these are things that are literally heavy on my heart and my soul at like all of us, I'm sure in some capacity. And I had this moment where I was like, just give me some answers, please. And lo and behold, it shows up with the living spaces guy, you know, like of all people. And I was like, Pablo, why are you here? And come to find out he has, he escaped from Cuba. He built a homemade raft, went across the ocean, surrounded by sharks. Like you couldn't make this story up. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's like, yeah, I've been on Newsweek and Time and all the things. And I'm like, I'm like, how am I talking to Pablo in, in living spaces in Las Vegas about having this triumph story? I'm like, why aren't you speaking and lecturing? And he's like, oh, I do. I just love selling furniture. And I was like, you know, my mind is just going crazy because this guy is amazing. And I just had this moment where I was like, it didn't come how it looked, like I thought it should look, but it came. And so if we can sit quietly and experience the moments where just intuitively in that moment when he said, I have all the answers you need. Well, Pablo, I got a question for you. You probably don't have an answer to, you know? And lo and behold, he had the best answer of the year, literally. I mean, it was phenomenal. So, and it's funny because at the end, he said, you know, conversations matter. And I said, that's funny. That's the name of my website, Conversations Matter. Because like, you know, it's just, it's too, it's too crazy to not be called amazing and miracle. Like it's too out there to not be called crazy and a miracle. And if it, and even if there are doubters on this planet, to me, it was a miracle. It was exactly what I needed. And that's all that matters. And maybe that story can help another person that you might feel frustrated in the circumstances, but you never know the golden nuggets that we all have in each other. You never know. Wow. Wow. That, that, that is really amazing and powerful. First of all, my heart goes out to your neighbors. You know, I know this is a really tough time for a lot of kids. So my heart goes out to them. Um, and, and I love how you share that you had that intention of walking to the store. Uh, why is this all, why is the world happening right now? And there it is, you manifested your own answers. And, and the other thing was, um, I thought Pablo would, would tell you, I know the answer to all the problem in the world is because people are sleeping on the wrong bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, need to get a better bed. Right, right. You know, and it, what's crazy is it was nothing about beds. He was the best salesman I've ever met. He didn't say anything about beds. He's like, you like this one? You like this one? Blah, blah. He's the top salesperson in the entire place. Think about that. Wow. <laughs> crazy. 
crazy. It is crazy. And he had the answers for you. Not, not that you were looking for that particular answer. You were manifesting to the Certainly answer. Certainly not from Pablo at Living Spaces. And then he gives me his website and his book. And, you know, I start, I buy his book and I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy escaped Cuba. Like, this is just crazy. Like, you know, the, the, the power, uh, empowered conversations and the, the story that he had, you know, was just crazy to me. Like, I, I couldn't have asked for a better experience. And like, my whole life changed in that moment. And it, it sounds so like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? But it did, because it reminded me that there's always light in darkness. There's always light in the darkness, always. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, where can people find you? Um, I am at heatherchriswell.com and uh, all my information is there. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing my best to not be on social media. So you can find me there, but you won't see me very active. <laughs> only time I'm really active is when I'm sharing stuff like this with the world, because um, that's just how I, I, I'm rolling right now. Like, I need to remember that not to put too much of people's information in my head, but to decipher the information in my own world and share that with the world. And that's where I'm at right now. So that's what I'm working on and why I'm here. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much for coming to the show. And I feel this is something that I needed to hear here today. Um, you know, cause I was going through some uh, realignment within myself this morning. And I'm like, why am I doing this? And, and I think this is the perfect conversation that I needed to hear. Well, thank you. And thank you for having this platform where it is sharing with the world. The people that do podcasts have all my respect because it's a lot of work and people don't realize how much work it is to actually produce something like this and to share it with the world. So I'm so incredibly grateful that you're doing this and sharing love and courage and compassion and connection with the world. Like that, that's the best thing that you can do in my opinion in this world is do that. So thank you for creating this platform for all of us to share. Thank you so much. So again, everyone, you can find Heather at heatherchriswell.com and you can always follow her on Facebook and reach out to her and she will, she would be happy to connect. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. All right, everyone. So join me next week for another episode of Live Coffee Talk, where I bring you more love, courage, and connection. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to follow me on my Facebook at Life Coaching by Elevate, or just shoot me a DM and I'm happy to connect with you. All right. Have a great day. Enjoy.